we all form habits, whether we know it or not, that dictate sometimes our happiness or our contentment with where we are in a day. Some people get locked into that habit so that if anything interrupts it, they get irritated or frustrated by their routine being changed. Habits can be good in the sense of that they can help direct you in a direction you should go. And if you choose to make a habit by repetitiously doing something, then allow yourself enough freedom within that habit to be directed by God so that if something causes you to step outside of that habit you have, you're not frustrated, but rather you're confirmed in your choices to do something repetitiously. Because you see, one of the things that a habit is, if it's getting up in the morning and having, say, a cup of coffee before you do anything, then it's possible that habit for you is a good thing. But there may be days when you don't get your cup of coffee, and then how do you react to that? So let a habit be a guide for you, but not a binding influence on your life, so that if you don't get your cup of coffee in the morning, you're not frustrated. Now, the reason I say this is because habits are another form of traditions. You see, a habit that you do regularly is a tradition. It's something that you pass on daily from day to day to month to month and then goes beyond that to year to year. So you see, there's a lot of things that are in Christian language that really is practical solutions or practical realities that we don't realize are equal in God's eyes. Your daily habit could be your tradition. Some morning traditions are to get up and have a devotion or to read a Bible, which you should do every day. You should take in somehow the Word of God so that it can go inside you and abide in you and cause you to feel and know that the Word of God is richly dwelling in you because Jesus is there causing you to live according to the Word that you've read as He's applying it to your life and working it from the inside to the outside and from the outside confirming you through the inside that your attitude, your actions, your intentions, your directions and all that you're doing today is in accordance to His will. Pretty spiritual way to simply say make it a habit to do what you're told. Isn't that simpler than saying obey the law? To obey is better than sacrifice? So you see there's always a way of looking at things. You can look at your tradition as vain or vanity or helpful and practical or call it a habit and it's forming in you a positive response to God as he directs you. Not all traditions are bad, nor are all habits good. A habitual sinner <laughs> isn't necessarily a good thing. But if it's your habit or your tradition to seek the Lord daily, then I think you found a good thing. In God calling, gratitude. Give me the gift of a brave and thankful heart. Man proves his greatness by his power to see causes for thankfulness in his life. Be ye thankful. When life seems hard, and troubles crowd, then very definitely look for causes for thankfulness. It's good to give thanks on Sunday morning, but what about the rest of the week? The sacrifice, the offering of thanksgiving, is indeed a sweet incense going up to me throughout the busy day. In all your day, throughout the day, in some way, give thanks. 
Seek diligently for the something to be glad and thankful about in every happening, and soon no search will be required. The causes for joy and gratitude will spring to greet your loving hearts. Gratefulness and gratitude, giving thanks and being thankful, work not only towards God, but in you to cause you to have a different perspective with the way that you're going to deal with someone else and someone else's attitude. If you give thanks to begin with for whatever it is that they're bringing towards you, it may be a little easier to deal with the frustrations you may have at how they're presenting themselves to you. Because love has to be underneath all your motivations and directions. It has to influence the choices that you make and how you will respond to any given situation. Whether it will be directed by God to cause you to bind yourself to a person or whether it will be by your flesh to cause you to push against a person or against his hands, God's hands, causing you and wanting you to connect with a person and become closer together. You see, the body of Christ was meant to be knit together, was meant to be Here's the church, here's people, open the doors, yell at people. So the, the, the truth is, we're meant to be close-knit brethren, getting closer together, not farther apart, as we see the end of days that we live in coming upon us quickly. We're supposed to encourage one another, exhort one another in joy. That means to, exhort means not to tell them what to do, but to encourage them in what they're doing. See, there's always kind of two ways to look at it. On the one hand, you could make yourself in charge, and on the other hand, you can let God be in charge. And whatever action that you're doing, whether it be what you think is for good or doesn't really receive from the other person that joy of being exhorted, then you can tell the difference simply by who is directing that action you're doing. Is it to God directed from you to encourage them? Or is it you discouraging them by thinking God is directing you to tell them something? An exhortation isn't to stop someone from doing what they're doing. It's to encourage them in the direction they should go and helping them to know what it is that God would share with them in love, in mercy, and in grace. Today, when you're walking with God, be thankful. It may get you a lot farther with someone than being critical.